Joining us now, Patrick Meyer, Crisis Mapper and 2012 Emerging Explorer. Hi, all. I'm the uh, co-founder of We Robotics, an NGO that democratizes exploration using robotics. And we do this through our flying labs. These are local innovation labs run entirely by local staff whom we train and who then choose to work on a whole range of different projects. So, for example, our Tanzania Flying Labs has been using flying robots for a range of applications, including environmental monitoring, uh, coastal management, and more. And they work directly with all the local communities for these uh, projects. And in a couple of months, I'll be heading to the Seychelles to continue a project there that we started, focused specifically on marine life conservation. So uh, basically mapping, counting eels, counting sharks, but also uh, creating 3D models of the atolls to better understand how they change and how they are being impacted by climate change. Over at our Nepal Flying Labs team, they've also been using flying robots for uh, wildlife monitoring, some environmental work, as well as agriculture. Their most recent project was a very ambitious one in response to the major earthquake that happened a couple years ago, which triggered 20,000 landslides uh, over time. And so they worked on this massive landslide, one of the most massive landslides in the region, um, to survey that, to map it with a humanitarian organization because people have been rebuilding in these areas not knowing whether they're actually placing themselves in even greater harm's um, way. So they've done some really fantastic high-resolution 3D modeling that the organization, the humanitarian aid organization, is using to do risk modeling and then to help some families relocate so where they can actually be uh, safer from future landslides. In Peru, our Peruvian team has been working in the Amazon rainforest with the Ministry of Health and local doctors to better understand um, some of the challenges around delivering essential medicines. Because, of course, in the Amazon, you don't have highways, you don't really have roads. The me main means of transportation is by a riverboat, which can take a very, very long time and also be quite unreliable. So our team's been using Frankie the drone, uh, Frankie after Frankenstein, because you can see it's all beaten up and covered in duct tape. And that's to show you that robotics doesn't have to be sexy. It just has to bloody work, right? So Frankie took this uh, anti-venom uh, to a very far remote Amazon uh, village. And you can see it here getting close um, and appearing uh, in the skies over this remote village. Now, it would have taken a canoe up to six hours to get there. But Frankie did that in 35 minutes. Big change. That night, the local doctors asked us to fly some blood samples back to the local town for testing. And so that's what Frankie did. Flew into the night all the way back. And you'll see the doctor, Giovanna, here uh, receiving the blood samples on her end. So that's our story. We've been working in about a dozen countries over the past uh, year. We're going back to the Amazon in a couple of days, then to Myanmar, Niger, Indonesia, and Fiji to train other local teams on how to use this technology. And it would make our day if we could connect you all explorers with other local robotics teams to work with you. So please get in touch if we can help. Thank you.